I'm back today and I'm excited to talk to you about VLAN backed segments in <laughs> I can't talk. What's up nerds? I'm back today feeling a little bit extra nerdy. Got the hat, got the shirt, and I'm going to talk about how to implement VLAN backed segments in NSXT and we're going to actually go through doing it here live. So first before we get to that, I want to talk about what they are. A VLAN backed port segment is basically the opposite of overlay networking. Overlay networks are really cool because they allow us to extend networks over layer three boundaries, such as between a pod, an availability zone, or even between data centers. The downfall is we have to implement edge nodes, we have to advertise networks from those edge nodes to the physical network, we have to receive routes, and ultimately those, those subnets are kind of owned by NSX. Not everybody's ready to make that jump immediately. So VLAN back segments give us a way to kind of bridge that gap. Basically in a nutshell, all we're gonna be doing is when you place a VM on a VLAN back segment, it's no different than a distributed port group or a standard port group in vSphere. It's just going to switch traffic out to the physical network and the physical network will then decide where it goes. It will either switch it or route it. That will be all on the physical network. There is no change to routing on the physical network, which is one of the huge benefits of VLAN back port groups. Now, if you just bring a VM under NSX control and you create a port group, I get it. You're probably thinking, why in the world would I do that when I could just leave it in vSphere and have things be more simple? Well, the reason a lot of people do this is because when you have a VM on a VLAN back port group, you can then do distributed firewalling and distributed intrusion detection in NSX on those VLAN back port groups and all of the workloads on them, which is really cool because you're not changing any routing on the network, but you're adding security. So that's why a lot of people do it. So let's take a look at this. You'll see here, I have this drawing. At first, just to kind of lay the land, I have a couple of vSphere hosts. Then I have those connected to a couple of topper rack switches. And I don't really care what the connections look like. I just drew those here. And in this case, the default gateway exists somewhere on the physical network. You see, I kind of placed it between these two. It could be HSRP, it could be a router, it could be a firewall. We don't really care. There's a default gateway on the physical network and that's all we really care about. In this case, I have three VMs that I'm illustrating, and these are all gonna be on the same network. I just color-coded them to make things a little easier to talk about. So the first, I have a couple of blue VMs here. These are sitting on this host, and I have a pink VM sitting on host two. Now, first, what I already went and did is I added these hosts to the proper transport zone. So if you recall in my video about transport zones, hint, you can check out a link up there. I talked about how the transport zone defines the span of the logical network. So you'll see here, in this case, I use the name Nerdy VLAN TZ. And basically what happens is I create this transport zone and I add these hosts to that transport zone. So now what that means is any network I create that I add to that transport zone, these VMs will have access to. So just to illustrate the point, and this is actually what we're gonna build out, I've come up with this VLAN 106 segment and I've called it a finance segment. Maybe it's a special app for finance people or something like that. So once I create that segment, and we're gonna go through this in a second, it will be available on both of these hosts so that these VMs, all the blue and the pink, will have access to connect to it just like a regular vSphere port group. Let's say VM1 wants to talk to VM2. Just as a standard vSphere networking or vSphere port group, whether it's standard or, or distributed switch, VM1 will communicate to VM2 locally within the hypervisor. It won't even have to leave because they're on the same port group or same VLAN. So that doesn't change at all. Now let's say VM1 wants to talk to this pink VM over here. VM1 will come up here and it will hit its default gateway if they're on the different network. If they're on the same network, they're gonna come up here and just be switched over here. So again, routing doesn't change. This is just standard routing and switching. And again, it depends if it'll be routed depending on what network we're talking about, but no change to routing or switching at all. So let's get into it and let's actually take a look at, at implementing what we've drawn out here. All right, so here we are inside of NSX Manager. So I'm gonna give you guys a very, very quick rundown of the prep work I've done. Everything I've done here can be found in either my transport zone videos or in the NSX from scratch videos. So this is all stuff I've gone through before, but I wanna show you guys so you can follow along. So the first thing I've done, I've got some transport zones that I created. And I think actually in this case, I'm gonna use the default. Yeah, I'm gonna be using this NSX VLAN transport zone. This is the default, so I've done nothing special to this. This was already here. You don't have to worry about these because we're not gonna be using these. So we've got this default transport zone. It's a VLAN transport zone. That's the only thing important to know about that. Then I've prepped my NSX uh, transport host or, or transport nodes rather. So we'll go down here and look at those. 
and we see we have 254.11, 254.12. Now if you go, I'll show you guys what the configuration looks like very briefly. If you look right here, transport zones, I've got an overlay transport zone added, so I can do overlay networking on this node if I want to. If you're following along and all you want to do is VLAN back segments, you don't need this overlay transport zone. Um, I do have this VLAN transport zone here. That's the one we're going to be working with. So I'm going to cancel out of that. You guys have the uh, config here. And this, again, matches my other videos pretty well. So we're going to go over to networking. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually create the network. So the first thing we're going to do is go to segments. Then we're going to select add segment. Once in here, we're going to give our segment a name. This will actually be the port group name in vSphere. I'm going to use finance VLAN 106, if I can type right, there we go. I'm going to select the proper transport zone. In this case, it's going to be VLAN transport zone. And then all I need to do is give it a VLAN tag if I need that VLAN to be tagged. In this case, I do. So I'm going to use VLAN 106. And I'm going to hit save. At this point, the VLAN segment is created. There's not much more to do. It is important to note that you have to have that VLAN provisioned on the physical network. In my case, I have a topper rack switch. I've already created VLAN 106. If you don't have that, it won't work because again, all of the routing is going through the physical network. So if VLAN 106 is not created on the topper rack switch, this won't work. So let's go to vSphere and we're gonna actually see if our networks are available and then see if we can assign them. So first I'm gonna go over to the networking tab here. And there we go, there's our segment right there. And we can see we have a VLAN ID of 106, which is good. Now we're gonna head over back to the host tab and we need to actually assign the network. So to do that, pretty standard. This is no different than any other VM. I'm gonna select edit settings and I'm gonna go to the network adapter and hit browse and select the current network or the proper network. Gosh, I can't talk today. All right, we're gonna do the same thing for all of these VMs, as I mentioned. So these are pretty straightforward, nothing special here. I'm gonna fast forward through this last one. All right, so we got all of our VMs added to the proper network. Now, the only thing that I'm not sure about is I have DHCP set up on that VLAN, but uh, they might not have actually pulled an IP. So let's go into the web console of one of these, and I'm using Slack's Linux for this. Uh, yep, that, that actually has an IP that's on the current network. So I use my VLAN ID as the third octet. So this is a good IP. So let's hop over to start with VM Blue 2. So keep in mind, these are on the same physical host as my drawing was showing. I'm going to reorganize that. There's Blue 2. Okay, so those are good. So I have VM Blue here is 106.3, and VM Blue 2 is 106.5. So first, let's see if we can ping on the port group. Uh, just within a single host. And yes, of course we can, so that's good. Now the real test is if we can ping across host. Because remember, I didn't configure any NSX routing for this network, this is a VLAN network, this is a VLAN back segment. So let's hop into VM pink, and that will be the real test. Okay, so this one does have a good IP, 10.25.106.4. So if you recall, the other VMs were 25.106.3 and 5. So we're gonna ping three, and that works all day long, and we'll ping five. So that's all there is to it, guys. If we actually go back to this diagram, you can see we, we did exactly what this diagram shows. In this case, I had the transport zone was set, I used the default transport zone name, uh, but I could have easily created one, no big deal there. Other than that, we created that segment, that segment was automatically populated on both of the hosts, you saw me assign the VMs to it, and now these VMs are completely under NSX control. And again, the beauty is now I can do distributed firewalling and IDS or IPS, and I don't have to re-architect anything on my network. So I hope this video was helpful. Definitely subscribe if you guys want to see more stuff like this. Uh, I appreciate the support. Hope you all have a great day. Thanks.